The United States has traditionally been the country of the red, white, and blue. But of late, we've become the red, white, blue, and green. This is Tom Fulmer with National Drug Screening, and welcome to our video blog series. Today's topic is going to be drug testing, marijuana, and the workplace. After a historic election cycle, we've seen many states shift from a stance of no marijuana, marijuana is completely illegal, to now in some states it's medically legal, in other states it's actually recreationally legal. This has been a dramatic shift over the last few years in the push for legalizing marijuana across the country. There's a lot of people pushing for it, there's a lot of money behind it, and there are a lot of challenges that it's creating, especially with the changes in the statutes by state but not federally. So federally marijuana is still illegal, however many state statutes have legalized it in a variety of different ways, with also a variety of different laws associated with what's legal, what's not. For instance, in some states you can possess marijuana, a certain amount, but you can't buy it. In other states you can give it to somebody, but you can't accept it. There's quite a few different things out there that are going to have to be rectified as we're dealing with this. Now, how does this relate to employment law? One of the challenges for employers is that the legalization of marijuana is really placing them in a tough spot, especially with the differences between states and the competition between how it's going to be handled federally versus on a state level. This is further complicated by the employers who may have people that they hire in one state while they work in a different state, or they may have locations in multiple states that may be affected. And this is going to be an ongoing challenge that you're going to really have to work through uh, how you're going to handle that. In today's video, I'm going to give you some tips and recommendations of some things you can do to help protect yourself and actually help protect your employees at the same time. So the question we often get is, can employers continue to drug test workers and job applicants for legal substances? Well, of course they can. Changes in marijuana laws have not affected whether you can test someone. Because what you're really looking to test for is, is somebody taking a substance that's going to be impairing them at work. And you're really looking for a level of impairment uh, at work or if they're consuming illegal substances, which has uh, quite a few other repercussions associated with that. So the thing is, if you continue to test, what's going to happen when someone tests positive? This is really something that should be addressed in a workplace policy. If it's not been updated in a while, or if your staff, your supervisors, your managers aren't up to date on how to handle situations, you're probably going to run into legal liability and other issues. So there are also some states that are legalizing marijuana. Are they also maybe inadvertently legalizing impairment? And that really seems to be what the case is because these laws tend to be creating a protected class for marijuana users, or that's the push behind it, or the accident of some of the language in some of the laws. And that's something that's going to have to be addressed and clarified as we go. And unfortunately, it's something that's going to be worked out in the courts more often than in the uh, legislature. At least that's the feeling we have to this point. And despite the rhetoric and proponents of marijuana, there are numerous studies that conclude that people under the influence of marijuana are impaired in one or more ways, and that it's comparable to impairment by alcohol. Now from these studies, we also know that marijuana users are typically less safe drivers, less alert at work, and less reliable compared to those not using marijuana. And this is from multiple studies. And it's not just impairment from marijuana or use of, it's also use of any other drugs that these studies reference as well. Now the threat to the workplace is real. You know, employees who use drugs are more likely to ask for time off, they're more likely to be late, to miss work, uh, to have a poor quality of work. And this is not specifically talking about marijuana, but just in general. And individuals, individuals who test positive on pre-employment tests are 77, get that 77% more likely to be terminated within the first three years of employment. And this is a challenge for the employee and also for the employer who's invested a lot of time, effort, and money in hiring the employees. And employees who test positive for marijuana have 55% more industrial accidents, 85% more injuries, and absenteeism of 75% higher than the average worker who does not test positive for any drugs. And again, these studies are ones that have been done more recently. And despite what some of the popular belief is, 
these issues are still things you're going to have to deal with. Now, medical marijuana has been passed now as of this last election cycle in 33 states. And there's eight states now that allow recreational marijuana. However, many of these states either offer employer protections to be able to test for uh, marijuana as well as other substances still, or they don't mention it, which means it's going to default to what case law is, which has still been traditionally in favor of employers. However, there are a few states that have really created some challenges. They essentially have language within the legislation that creates a protected class for marijuana users and for people who have a medical marijuana card. And that's going to be a real challenge when that comes out in the courts because sooner or later it will. Now those states with laws with employment protections, in other words employee protections built in for medical marijuana card holders typically, are going to be Connecticut, Maine, Nevada, Rhode Island, Arizona, Delaware, Illinois, Minnesota, New York, and Pennsylvania. Uh, I didn't mention Florida in there, although that has a few other issues. It doesn't have specific language protecting people with a medical marijuana card. However, it does have a list of debilitating diseases that fall within the medical marijuana statutes. And this essentially could bring up ADA or Americans with Disabilities Act issues. So that one's a little different in that something could be resolved through the legislative language or as the laws are being passed and how to implement that particular law. Now, as we move on to some of the points that you really should take away from today, remember marijuana does remain illegal under federal law and so far case law does support the employer's right to both test for and take action on uh, someone who is using marijuana or any other uh, illegal drug or is under the influence of an impairing drug or substance during work. Another thing that is relevant to this is OSHA has a general duty clause which is section 5A that requires employers to keep the, the workplace free of recognized hazards and obviously drugs with impairing effects are recognized hazards so if you drop marijuana from your testing just because of the public push or the public perception shift you could open yourself up to some liability issues there. And remember, marijuana is an impairing effect substance. That's just the fact that it is. Whether they're using it at work or not does not change whether they might be affected. So you really should make sure that you've addressed those appropriately in your policy. And the last thing is just a few tips as you walk away from today. Make sure you review your company's policy. If you haven't done that in a while, you're probably missing out on some important facts that you need to have addressed in the policy. If you haven't updated in the last year or two, uh, there's probably some holes in your policy. And if you haven't worked with your supervisors and your managers to make sure they're really aware of what's in the policy and how to handle certain issues as they arise, you're going to have challenges sooner rather than later. Unlike a lot of workplace issues that you deal with on a regular basis, Drug testing may not be one of those. In someone testing positive or coming under reasonable suspicion, uh, having an issue, those may be things that your staff, your supervisors, your managers aren't prepared to handle correctly, and that could lead to uh, liability, legal liability for those things. And you also want to make sure your workers are aware of what your policies are, both before they start to work for you while they're working there and if any changes or even if no changes occur just keeping them aware of what your policy is and what actions are going to be taken in certain circumstances is important to a good workplace and then the last thing is make sure you enforce uh, things across the board in other words you don't enforce them different for different people consistency and application of your processes your procedures of your policy is absolutely key For more information on this topic and other related topics to drug testing, supervisor training, uh, anything related to your drug testing policy programs or within the industry, make sure you visit our blog, the NDS blog, at www.nationaldrugscreening.com, where you'll find blog posts, videos, great information, resources, uh, and links to all the things that will help you do your job better, more effectively, and make drug testing simpler for you. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Tom Fulmer with National Drug Screening. We'll see you on the next video.